In The Witcher books and games, we get to meet a decent amount of powerful sorcerers and sorceresses. Like, for example, Tessaia de Vries, Vilgefortz, Philippa Alhart, and Jennifer. But sometimes, to understand how those who are powerful at this moment were able to do so, we have to look at mages from the past who accomplished feats so impressive, most of the mages on the continent wouldn't be able to dream about pulling something similar off. Herbert Stemmelfort was one of the first Nordling mages, living at a time when Nordlings were still kind of new to the continent. We do not know when exactly he was born, but by the 830s, 70 years after Nordlings arrived on the continent, he was already a well-known and established mage. Herbert Stemmelfort had specialized himself in earth-based magic, as far as we can see. Almost everything we know about Stemmelfort in a way it connects to this type of magic. From Stemmelfort's earthquake spell to his successful summoning of a Tao. According to legends, Herbert Stemmelfort was able to successfully summon and control a Tao. Sometimes people use the name Tao to refer to an earth elemental, the likes of which you can see in The Witcher 3. But this is not the kind of Tao that Stemmelfort controlled. The actual thing that he controlled was the genie of the earth element, and not an earth golem. You might be more familiar with the Jinn, which is the air equivalent of a Tao. There are only a few mages who successfully managed to summon these beings of the elemental planes. You can use a Jinn to have three wishes fulfilled, but what can you use a Tao for? Well, Stamford decided he didn't like the location of a mountain, and had the genie move the entire thing because it obstructed the view from his tower. This feat was so special, in fact, that nobody has ever managed to pull the same thing since. But Stamford's life didn't just exist out of him moving a mountain. He was also one of the founding members of the Brotherhood of Sorcerers in the 830s, a few years before the birth of the Vampire Regis. Around this time, he and the other members of the Brotherhood were in a kind of war against other mages who didn't want to recognize the Brotherhood. These mages included the mage Brafart the White, who, in a way, ruled over Tamaria at that time. Herbert Stamford has long since passed away in the books and games, but he is still remembered to this day. You might have known about his feast for the Tao, but the name might have sounded familiar to you still, for it can be found on potions, ingredients and spells in the games. For example, there is Stamford's Dust, an ingredient in The Witcher 3 used to make the enhanced versions of bombs. Then, there is Stamford's Filter, a Witcher potion from The Witcher 2 that would increase the sign intensity at the cost of the health of the player. The potion Petri's Filter, which you might be more familiar with, was created by a student of Stamford, who was presumably named Petri. His potion was less effective than Stamford's, but it also didn't have any negative consequences for the witchers that consumed it, no longer dealing damage to their health. And last but not least, there is Stamford's Earthquake, also known as Stamford's Tremors. This spell allows the mage who cast it to create a very heavy local earthquake that is able to bury anyone within a short distance. We can actually see the spell being used in The Witcher 3 by Yennefer in the opening cinematic, where she uses it to protect herself from the charging armies. Herbert Stemmelfort, by the time of the books and games, has long since passed, but is still remembered for his legendary feats for the Tao and his contributions to magic. Ciri, in her time in the Lander, even read a book written by him, titled Dialogues on the Nature of Magic. But what do you think about Herbert Stemmelfort? Till next video. Bye.